Today's guest is a professional mixed martial artist. MMA man, you know it. That grappler, that cage baby. You know what I'm talking about. You know who he is, man. You know what it is. He currently competes at the Bantamweight division in UFC and is allegedly undefeated. Um, that man uh, is here with his uh, mixed martial artist coach and trainer. Um, they are uh, the combined do the Timbo Sugar Show, which is a beautiful uh, podcast you can check out. Um, one of them also hosts a podcast with his brother, Daniel, and that's a name of that guy. And that show is called the bro Malley show. You can check out both of these men. I'm happy to have them back actually on the podcast for the second time. Uh, it is Mr. Sean O'Malley and Tim Welch. Let myself all wild shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my story. Shine on me, and I will find a song. I will sing it just for you. God, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jehovah, too. You gotta remember. Are you jade out, huh? Mm. Jade out, too. You clayed out, you know what I mean? Y'all were witnesses, huh? JW, the truth. I'd the one and only truth, boys. Just him. Wow. I'm more of a Christian slash Lutheran. Yeah, we went to, when I was growing up, we went to Sixth Baptist, I think, or Seventh Baptist. We were. Which, well, which one was it? I want to say it was Seventh Baptist. Because we don't want to disrespect the Seventh Baptists. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were, I mean, we were at the end of the Baptist line. We were barely, you <laughs> know. You were the first Baptist? Yeah, I mean, they had a sign on them going into the church that said, Lord wanted. Oh. So it was. So they like, were looking looking for him. Yeah, they were. It was a lot of, uh, a lot of soul searching. You're looking healthy. Really? I mean, your complexion, your build. I want to know what you've been eating. Uh, what did I have? Or yes. what you haven't been eating. I had a crab cake yesterday. Uh, what else? <laughs> I don't know, really. I guess endor. I don't know if endorphins or something. I don't even know how you have that. Um, but we're sitting here. We got uh, Sugar Sean. And we got Timbo, Timmy Welch. Um, thank you guys for your time today. Amen. Y'all look very... You were okay, Tim. Kind of, you have that look. You remind me of like one of the like a hitman or a wrestler, like in the eighties or like or like late eighties. Mm -hmm. Oh, a gay one. But never. But he would never admit he was gay. In fact, he threatened to fight gay. He'd be like, "I'll fight gay. I'll go forty rounds with gay." Yeah. Yeah. It's in yeah. the closet. Yeah. I mean, I've been called a fag a handful of times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, when my girl met me, she thought Tim and I were gay. The yeah. first time. Mm -hmm. So we've been called, been there. How close have you guys ever been in like a nudist environment where you guys are both nude? Probably grappling. I mean, you're both, you know. But I don't mean in a, like a sexual, has there ever been a sexual environment where you guys have, like were on? Um, Double teaming a chick or something? Or just even like with somebody's there coach, you know, you're coaching, you're cornering him mm -hmm. or vice versa. Like in a room? Yeah. Have you ever cornered during sex is what I'm asking. That's a good question. Yeah, nothing yet. I no, think nothing yet. no. There's gonna be a time where we're oh, Elenita. That's there, his baby. There's gonna be look oh, at her. She has her backpack on. Yeah. Look at her. Yeah, I saw her, dude. I freaking, are we looking at my girl? That's one of many. I watched seven minutes of her swim lessons. Are you kidding? me? <laughs> <laughs> you think I don't know her? <laughs> uh, um, no, I think there'll be a time where we're like double teaming a chick, or like we both got a same uh, different chick in like a hotel or something. Like there'll be a crazy time because yeah. you know we we party. Yeah. So. Um. What'd y'all think of that Oscars deal, man? I thought it was like a, like Tim said, it was a nice shot. It wasn't loaded up. It was like, you couldn't see it coming. It was boom. It was direct, open hand. So he didn't drop him, which was, you know, best case scenario. Cause I don't think you wanted to knock him out. Right. You know what I mean? So a good slap. I thought it was a good shot. Do you think Rock handled it as well as he could? Like, cause Rock, he, it's at a certain point, it looks like he thinks that it's going to be, he's joking. Yeah. And then I'm sure at a certain point, I bet it was very close quarters when the energy probably changed in his mind. He's like, oh, this is not a joke. 
what do I do? Do you think Rock did the best thing that he could have done? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. I think so. I mean, he, you see him kind of want to get fired up, but I think he did it the best. Because what the fuck is he supposed to do? And imagine what would have happened if Will smacked him and it piled up Chris. Boom. Just boarded him. Yeah. That would have been bad. That's what I'm saying. Good thing it wasn't, a, it wasn't like a boom. That's the same scenario of Colby Jorge. I was thinking, I'm like, that was probably best case scenario that, that Jorge didn't knock Colby out, hit his head, kill him. So you ran into Chris yeah. at the after party. Yeah, bro. So it was pretty wild. So Spade took me over to the, um, who actually is from Arizona. Shout out. I think he's from Scottsdale. Hey. Uh, so Spade invited me to be his his uh, guest or whatever. We went to the um, Vanity Fair party. And then we went to some other dude, a rich guy's house. This dude was really, really rich. Like How'd they had a know? machine in the front. You could just get money out of it. It was just like, it was an ATM, oh, okay. but you could guess any number and it gave you, it was like, this dude was real, real rich. Like, yeah, they had, even his dog had like a little wallet on the side. Damn. Oh, wow. So this dude was really, really rich. And we went in and like Jennifer Lawrence is sitting in the back, just hanging out outside, like, just in her pajamas, she like lived next door, I guess, and so she came over because she heard some commotion or whatever. So she's out back just hanging out, like there's like Pelinope, Pelinope Cruz, uh, like a you know just fancy people. I mean, yeah. it's like fancy people you see on the magazine, and they're just sitting there, you know, eating. You know, they had some raviolis. Um, what else did they have? They had a salad that looked. It was a little wilt. I thought it was a little bit wilted, but people were eating it. Mm. Rich people will eat. They'll eat kind of more. They'll say it's like uh, more artistic kind of. But anyway, so <laughs> we get to finally see Chris Rock, right? And so, and I'm with David Spade, so Spade knows him. So they're just kind of talking, and he was just shocked. He was like, "What the fuck <laughs> happened?" He's almost. He, it reminded me of you ever been at a party and somebody gets hit by somebody, and then the person that hit him leaves. And there was never really like a big fight, or maybe there even was a fight, but the one dude never had any idea there was any beef or anything going on. And then you'd start talking to that guy, and he's like, bro, what the fuck happened? Like, what What do you think, you know? That's kind of what it was. He was just like, what the fuck So did happened? he not know that she had alopecia or whatever disease? That's why she was bald? Did he not know that? I think he had no clue. I think so he that had no make... clue. And who don't have alopecia? Everybody's going bald. Yeah. Well, it's... I'm not. Not yet. Exactly. And when you start, dude, it's going to look crazy. You go like one of those things that kids used to put on the end of their pencils. <laughs> it's going to be wild. Right? Is this the front or the back? Uh, right? Oh, yeah. Which, what do you want to lose first, do you think, if you had to lose front or back? <laughs> I just shaved the back. So I always have like a good front profile talking to chicks. Yeah, you got to go with the front. You know yeah. I mean? Then you turn around. It's no, just I wouldn't like, turn around. It's a salvage yard back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would turn Did you notice any of those A-listers <laughs> judging you? You know, this party, there was no, uh, f uh, and I'd never been, I've been to some fancy spaces, but I'd never been to anything like this. Like, apparently this is like the party to g end up at, right? Would you, were you wearing a suit? Yeah. Oh, good. I was wearing a suit. And, um, yeah, so we were sitting at Spades. We watched the Oscars over there. So we're just watching. And then that the the slap happens and it was, m went mute on the television. Everybody's like, dang. Oh. And we didn't know if it was real. And then all these text messages started coming in. Um, and then we ended up, oh, we went to the Vanity Fair and nobody was really kind of talking about it. I think everybody was kind of in shock. Or and, the, uh, contemplating whether it was real or not. Right. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. There was a guy, there was a guy, uh, a writer there. And I remember him saying, I don't think that it was real. And I'm like, I don't think the acting could be that great. Yeah. No way, bro. Um, and so, yeah, then we ended up at the party and then Rock was there, which I thought was a cool movie. He's at the party. He's not like ducking anything, you know? Yeah. I think he thought it was really weird. He didn't look like affected. He didn't have like a little cast on his jaw or nothing, you know? Um, what would you have done if you got smacked like that? I don't think you, I think your reaction's so fast. I think you wouldn't have been able to be hit by that. But what, yeah, what do you think? I think I would have been, I think at a, I, at a certain point as he's approaching, I think I would have like- Squared up. Yeah, I oh. would have at least embraced, like taken on the idea that something was gonna happen. Yeah, put up karate hands. <laughs> I would have done something. Peaceful karate hands, <laughs> even yeah. these, yeah. Just just some separation though between. Yeah. yeah. You're like, huh. Yeah, I'd have done something or at least position myself like it was something was gonna happen. Yeah. It, I still might get hit, but something, you know, yeah. I'm gonna look like I'm ready to get hit. Yeah. Yeah. But Rock took it like a like a champ, bro. I agree. He took yeah. it like a champ. Um, what rematch would you rather see, Masvidal 
versus Colby or Rock versus Smith? <sighs> Rock versus Smith, probably just because I don't know how that plays out. But Colby versus Jorge, I think. I mean, I think that plays out pretty similar to yeah. how it played out the first time. Yeah, I agree. Well, how much bigger is Will than Chris? I think at least fifty pounds. I know that. Oh. How tall is Chris? You mind checking that out? How tall is Chris Rock? 5'10". Wow. I wonder if either can scrap. Will Smith is six one and a half. <laughs> did you measure him at the Oscars? I looked it up. Oh, I oh, did. you did? And then I got bored of looking it up because I was trying to figure out the weights or whatever, and I just went to sleep. Yeah, I did that sometimes. But, uh, yeah, so that... That'd yeah. be a good scrap, though. But who? that was it. He was chilling. Like, the whole party was crazy. It was like, like, who... I mean, it was just... I felt like I was literally wandering through Netflix or something, you know? A live, like a live Netflix. Yeah, like through like a movie channel. It was like the Kardashians showed up at Shut the up. end. Shut up. Yeah. Dude, I've been watching the Kardashians from season... The first season. So what? 2006, me and Danny have been watching it, like binge watching it. Uh-huh. And dude, it's entertaining. It's so much drama and it's so fucking entertaining that I look forward to it every night. And wow. I'm so excited. There's so many seasons. It's crazy to look 2006 because we know obviously how their lives are playing out right, right now. And it's so fucking wild to watch from back then. Like Kylie and Kendall are little girls, like 10, 11 years old. Uh, it's wild. You think a lot of perv dudes go back and watch the old episodes looking at the kids? I would just yank. Yeah. Really? Oh, wow. Interesting. It's That's sad to see. Thought. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys know Jada was so into sex? Um, I remember hearing like Will didn't please her, right? I remember hearing that specifically. But can you even, I mean, I think, I don't know. A lot of black women seem hard to please, A. And then B, I think it's hard to, uh, as a man, after a while, you only got so, you know what I'm saying? You're already Will Smith. What else are you going to do? Well, you can yeah. only do like even if you do with some sex. What are you gonna do? You know. Well, I think switching it up, like, because Danny and I have been recently, um, we hooking up with this chick. Yeah. Like two weekends in a row. Why? Right. And dude, it makes. Is this the trampoline chick? <laughs> trampoline chick. Yes. That and it, full it, moon bird. It was huh? fire. So you, yeah, and so if you don't know, um, Sean has been. They, ha, they ha, has an open wife marriage thank you and they uh and you said they've been dating a woman well no i wouldn't call it dating okay. we've been hanging out we hung out with her twice we we're just like you know having a good time but uh it makes our sex when we have sex by ourselves better you know like we go hook up with the chick and then the next night we're hooking up with each other talking about that moment yeah. or whatever it just just doing shit like that because we've been together seven eight years tim's been with his girlfriend for like 11 years like you got to do things to keep spicing it up it's a right. skill it's a relation relationships are a skill and doing things like that like we went on a date with her we went out to dinner mm. but we ended up getting it to go because my sexual tension was too high really order dinner and i'm like hey let's just get it to go you know what i'm saying yeah anyway but doing shit like that makes our sex even better. Do and, you have other people reaching out to you about like, how do I get my life to that situation? Uh, it's because, I mean, you know, there's some dude sitting at a dang Chipotle right now with his yeah. lady and be like, hey, a lot. I mean, it's so hard because everyone's so insecure. Like, yeah, like it, it's a build up over the years and trust. And like the biggest thing for Danny is like making sure I'm not going to like go and fall in love with this girl and leave her. Right. So it's like there's just a lot of communication. It's a lot of years built up and listening to podcasts. But the biggest thing is that the girls like Mariah and Danny being open to it and listening to podcasts and listening or reading books and doing their own research and it, that, that's huge and if a girl isn't open for that it's gonna be very tough to uh i don't know you know live a fake life for the most part yeah have you experienced any three bangers let me think i've been in oh i remember years ago i got in uh there was a lady that looked like there was like this pretty hot chick right in missouri and then there was her friend or i mm. think maybe her cousin or somebody and they said they were cousins but they also could have been lying about being cousins and one of them looked like one of those power lifters from like the like 1910s or whatever who would look, lift like the big thing that it said like 100 pounds on each side. You know, this chick was jacked, bro. And I had to really make it happen fast because I had to be at the airport in like 
40 minutes, right? It's kind of nice and you have to make it happen fast and then you have an excuse to, oh, in case, yeah. you know what I mean? I like that. Anyway. Yeah, it was going to happen fast, man, you know? Because I'm, uh, my dick has a short wick, you know? Same. It has a good, it's a good penis, but has a short wick, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm quick to the dynamite, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. I've always been that way. I say it up front. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, we're going to be talking again in about three minutes. Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> Round two will be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Round two won't be better, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh so the one i started uh, it's always tough because you don't know like which one to hook up with kind of first the one who you are more attracted to mm -hmm. or the other one because you don't want you want to you know it ha probably has to be an even space in the yeah. deal and so i started hooking up with one of them and then the other one got all aggressive and started kind of shaking my shoulders and stuff and like a, uh grab the back of your neck oh it was insane yeah just very like uh aggro and just kind of move just like moving my like moving my head right between her tits like that <laughs> and uh and bro i got so scared bro i was so scared because it was a dark hotel room it was missouri it was probably a days in you hotel. know oh, okay. and it was di yeah it was real real dicey and so i'm sure i you know eject pretty quick and kind of rolled out yeah but it was a you know it was quite a time yeah um but so i'm glad to know that you guys are out here doing threesomes and training yeah. in the desert bro uh, to, um you know. so if you look at the yeah what what was the deal with that uh with that colby masvidal that thing was so wild huh yeah i mean Could i just you imagine doing that hit cold cock and someone like just that? the whole thing like the thing of in your head like okay you know where the guy is you're gonna roll up there you're gonna put a mask on that's like some thug gangster shit that you know i would i grew up in helena montana i'm not raised to do that he grew up in the fucking streets yeah. doing shit maybe not like that but fighting and so that probably seemed normal-ish to him yeah just how he was raised yeah, it just seems so wild. Like, imagine as you're walking, it was, it, I guess it was just him. And Bob Mennery. I just listened to uh, Bob Mennery on um, Raw Talk with Bradley Martin, that little dude. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he explained, Bob explained kind of what happened. But, yeah, I must have just found out the location. They were at the, obviously posting on their stories and fucking hit him a couple times, bop, bop, and dipped. Damn. It's crazy, God, dude. Well, you know, after that fight with Jorge and Colby, Jorge's just fucking fuming oh, dude. dude he wanted to win it so bad for his team for that fucking city and everything and after he just fucking wanted to do something well dude colby posted like five days in a row 50 45 50 45 like just oh, really? five days in a row on instagram tagging jorge just talk shit talk shit talk shit but i don't know it's it, there's a fine line between entertainment and and you making it personal and some people are on different lines colby's on the entertainment line jorge was on the personal line and i think colby was on the personal line too but i don't know it's just not a good look for jorge people loved it when he did it to leon but boom, boom, boom pieced him up right there loved it who leon spinks leon edwards oh leon edwards. he hit him backstage at the ufc <laughs> boom, boom boom two three piece and a biscuit people fucking loved that maybe jorge thought I'm gonna go do it to Colby. People will love it. Maybe yeah. it didn't that maybe that didn't cross his mind. I don't know. I'm a fan of both, regardless yeah. of it. Yeah, it's weird. The actually the, the I don't know. And then what do you face after that? And he just had a big contract. It just seems like a lot to kind of risk. But yeah, he must have been just real, real angered up. <sighs> or maybe a little. <laughs> yeah, a couple bumps here. Yeah. There. Oh, dude, you, know you know even I mean? in, yeah, yeah. You could get a bump off of anything there. I wonder Ooh. how much it'll cost him a quarter mil, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? Lawyer fees, fucking paying Colby out. Yeah, who knows? He Fuck. said he he hit. He his... pled not guilty, right? Yep. Wow. So who knows if he was even? Hit. And then he went on Twit uh, Twitter and said, "You shouldn't talk about my kids." Then Nate Diaz said, "You just called. You, you just fucking gave yourself up or turned yourself in or whatever." Yeah. He Damn. scuffed uh, Colby's Rolex, ninety thousand. <sighs> hmm. Yep. But some company will fix that just to say they fixed it. You know, somebody would help with that probably. Well, Colby's probably gonna get that from Jorge. Say, hey, you need fifty thousand just for the Rolex. Yeah, no one's heard of Col heard from Colby yet either. It adds. Oh, that's interesting. Like, did something really happen? To could him? have. I mean, dude, you get hit like that, you could get a bad concussion. I'm sure his lawyers like don't say shit. Let me yeah, take care uh, that could shit. be it too. And then not hear from Colby is kind of rare too. Yeah. Exactly. Um. What ethnicity do you feel like is like the hardest to knock out? Mexicans. Think? Really? Yeah. Mexicans are, f dude, I'd say Mexicans. I've sparred with a lot of, I mean, I fought and sparred a lot of Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Some of them just don't go down. Wow. What do you think, Tim? Dude, I'm same. Really? 100%. Dude. Efren Escadero, this kid, yeah. one of the ultimate fighter. 
beat the fucking tar out of the kid, and he just keep walking forward. Yeah, something, something in there. What is it? Well, look, look at Nate Diaz. Smaller brains, like Nate. maybe. Oh, yeah. chill. Just joke. You think it's smaller brains? Some people, I th- some people specifically, I think, are so stupid that they can't get knocked out. Because I think some s- smart people, you know, the, the brain says, "Okay, that's enough. Let's shut off." Yeah. Some people are so dumb that it might not be like. Let's keep going. You know yeah, I mean? the brain. Yeah. 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 Well, I've heard it be called the, t- tardio before. Tardio. Yeah, the brain's like, I'm gonna want to finish a book next week, so let's fucking <laughs> shut it down tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's sad though. I mean, some sometimes it's. Yeah, it's like just just go out like that kid with the green hair that I fought. Oh yeah. He did an interview like a week later, saying he's like, yeah, twenty eight days a week. He did an interview with a waffle maker a week later, I'm sure. Yeah, he said he trains eight days a week. Did he really? Oh, that's yeah. wild, bro. I'm like, that motherfucker should be champ right <laughs> now if he's training that much. That's a lot. I tried. I um, do you think with Davidson Figueredo, Figue- Figueredo uh, do you think that they, they can knock each other out? Like, I was talking to, um, uh, or no, F- Moreno. Yeah, yeah. Do you think with Moreno Figueredo, they can knock each other out? I mean, yeah, I think they both have the potential too. I think they're both so equally matched that it's hard to set up that perfect shot or, you know, a lot of knockouts come from someone being so fatigued, yeah. but they're so evenly matched that it's like one doesn't really f- completely fatigue. They're both kind of similar s- skills, similar cardio that, cause they haven't finished each other. Right. I think Moreno submitted him rear naked choked him. And so that's one, 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 but yeah, I mean, uh, they're definitely possibility to knock each other out, but I don't know if they will. Because is that what's next? Is that what we're hearing? A fourth fight? Number four. Yeah, I think they're locked up, right? I think they're locked up for a four. Yeah. The thing in fighting, you say something can't happen and it fucking happens, dude. Yeah. No, for sure. You know, um, there's times, you know, sometimes you find yourself, you don't know what to do. You don't know what's going to make something different. You don't know where to go next or who, who to ask next for help. And if you're not doing well, it's hard to ask yourself for help. Now, some of you may not need any help. You may be doing great, and I hope you are. But if you're not, I want to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. They're a good group. You can start communicating with a licensed uh, therapist in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's professional therapy done securely online. And that's important. You can get timely and thoughtful responses, schedule weekly video or phone sessions. I believe you can even text your therapist. Don't quote, I believe that though. Visit BetterHelp or or DM them. Visit BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. And join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. This past weekend, listeners get 10% off your first month, go to betterhelp.com slash T-H-E-O. Thank you. Look, for most of us, learning a sequin, 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 long one, sequin, long one, second language is hard. It's hard. Your tongue, you can't even get it to do it right. A lot of people, their tongue can't handle the pressure from the brain, the thoughts. Um... Some of us don't know English either, and we speak it, and that's insane. But Babbel is here to help. Babbel, 15-minute lessons, make it perfect way to learn language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans. But Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. You can learn all types of, of, of languages, bro. You can learn French, Italian, Spanish, German, baby. Get out there. Uh, right now, save up to 60% on your subscription when you go to B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash T-H-E-O. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Theo for up to 60% off your subscription. Babel, language for life. Um, Are you really cornering that yarn fight? Uh, uh Petter? Petter, 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 Petter fight? Yeah. Petter. Um, no, not really. It was funny. My, my buddy Schmidt came down. He's like, hey, dude, Peter said he, uh, he his coroner can't come. So I just messaged Peter on Instagram. Yeah. Never talked to him before, other than on Twitter. And, uh, sent him a video and he, he must, he opened it and posted it on Twitter. And, you know, a lot of people thought I was serious, but 
I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't waste my time going. I don't give a fuck if he wins or loses. You, you want someone in your corner that you know genuinely wants you to win or is going to like somewhat care. Like, what kind care. of video you send him? Like a audit, like a bit video of you I was, cornering. Somebody? I was streaming and I was like, "Yo, Peter, heard you don't oh. need a corner. Let me know if you. Uh, let me know. I'll be there." <laughs> but that fight's gonna be sick. I would yeah. love. You know, I want Peter to win. Yeah, I want to win. You know, two more fights. Yeah, and knock out Peter for, for the belt. That's that's ideal. That's that's what, your direction right now. Yeah, but do you think I'm gonna head up here? That's fire. I feel like I'm not in costume enough. No, you're good. No. Do you think though that because now you're like I remember asking you whenever you came uh, on this past weekend the first time I remember asking you and and like and saying, dude, if you like you just started maybe like doing some streaming or gaming and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, if you started making more money off of that and stuff, like with that, what's your passion kind of, you're like, it's just, I love to fight. Fighting's what I like. But now that you have like another life, you have another revenue stream yeah. that's similar probably to your fighting purses, I would guess at this point. I mean, there's big, there's, there's good money in this type of thing. Yeah. Um, do you, do you want it to kind of like like make it a little bit longer almost i'd be like i'll do a fight a year you know like it's a good question i'll answer it like this I, I definitely make more money outside of fighting than i do fighting right now hopefully you know I, I have two more fights in my contract fight those out hopefully that's not the case hopefully you know i've been a professional athlete at the highest level being the star that i am i hopefully will be making more money than i am outside of the ufc ideally yeah. um with that being said, yeah, I think eventually I would like to get to a fight where I'm just doing super fights, you know, living, training every day. Is, it's fucking hard on the body, dude. Yeah. It's like some days you just don't want to fucking train, especially going through fight camps. Last year I did three fight camps, about eight weeks out each, eight, 16, 24 weeks out of the year. I was in fight camp and uh, it was a lot. I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. when you, It depends when you ask me because when I am in fight camp, I do enjoy it and I learn how to enjoy it. By the end of it, though, like where Tim's at, he's at, Tim has a big competition coming up, ADCC trials. Mm -hmm. You're just fucking over it, dude. You just don't want to train anymore. It's just like you want to go out there, compete. And then recently after my fights, I like to fucking party, dude. I yeah. go through like eight weeks, like straight up two months of wanting to just like every weekend, just kind of where the boys at. Like, let's fucking go. Because it's in camp, so much discipline. You're missing out on, you feel like you're, you're missing out on everything. You're just training and recovering, training and recovering. Yeah. So after the fights, yeah, you get a little carried away, or at least I do. I have been for about two months wanting to just party. But if I could, if I could, you know, two fights a year, I'd be happy with two fights a year. You know, early maybe one, early January, February, March, and then this this December. I, I like fighting in December for some reason. It's just a nice way to end the year. Um, yeah, I don't even know what the fucking question was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, you know what I mean. The fucking discipline with the diets, dude. You just want some sourdough. Oh, <sighs> some sour you Like sourdough. Oh, dude, I remember one time I was on a, um, what's it called when you don't eat nothing and you just like fasting. think about God? Yeah, fasting. <laughs> I was on a fasting, bro, and uh, I could hear somebody fold a piece of bread from like 200 yards away. <laughs> yeah. Dude, uh, if a motherfucker had something stuck in their teeth, dude, I could smell it, bro. Like I just, it was insane, how, man. How, how many days did you go? That was only at five, probably four or five days. That's I've never done that. I don't even, can't even think about doing that bro you get so alert man you you're like your stomach itself is fuck is like is is smelling you know it's Damn. crazy just how alert you get um what is it uh, the trials you have coming up what is it tim yeah yeah it's a it's a grappling tournament it's like one of the biggest ones in my bracket alone there's like almost 250 guys so it's gonna be a long it's adcc day. trials so you gotta compete you have to win these trials mm -hmm. to compete in adcc so it's like the olympic trials to get to the olympics okay. so we're going to vegas Friday, he competes Saturday, could have potentially four or five, six matches Saturday. You win all those. Then you have to compete again Sunday and win those to be able to go to the ADCC. So it's a big deal. Are you in fighting shape right now for it? Yeah, I'm in good shape. I'm in good shape. I'm ready to fucking Probably the best shape you've been in yeah, going probably. to do a tournament. Best yeah. skill level, built best skill set, strongest okay, you've yeah. ever been. Oh, you look like you sell Doritos, dude, like in an alley. Like I definitely <laughs> feel like right now, you look like Chester Cheetah's fucking hit man. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, dude, y'all's division, that Bantamweight division. Uh, 
That Benway division yeah. is fucking fire. Stacked up. Yeah. I know. I, like, I keep getting asked who I want to fight. I really wanted to fight May seventh. There's a card here in Phoenix. I, I, you know, I wanted to fight Pedro Munoz, um, but apparently he's he's not ready to go till July. So there's a big card July second, International Fight Week. I'm hoping, praying Jehovah mm-hmm. that uh, he's ready to go by July second. You know. I Do you know that you're? Is there something kind of brewing? You just can't really say it, or you still know? That's that's as as much as I know right now is I'm I'm trying to fight Pedro pre, prelim Pedro July second if he's if he's ready to go and if not I, I would like to know you know Pedro let me know if you can't fight so I can you know look for someone else but that's that's the plan I want to go knock out Pedro knock out Rob Font if he beats Cheeto wouldn't mind knocking out Cheeto again uh, and then fighting for the title do you think and other things could happen in there too that could shake that whole pudding up dude. <laughs> Absolutely. But do you, would Cheeto have a new advantage against you since you guys fought before? Do you think there's, because he would be the first person, I guess, fight you again? That'd be a f- first right? rematch. So yeah. would there be, is there an advantage that he could have? Even from a coaching standpoint, would both, what do both you guys think? If you go back and watch that fight, and I'm not being biased towards myself, if you go back and watch that fight, he landed one kick with his big toe on my nerve which shut off my foot shut off my whole leg yeah. i couldn't walk oh yeah but before that had that before that you know uh before that I, I was dude i was piecing him up even when he kicked my leg i was still stumbling around piecing him up i blitzed in through a combo pieced him up he turtled up and i went back to step step back and my foot just there was nothing there just laid on my back yeah. and he, he landed an elbow uh, at that point, you know, I was a minute and a half in. My leg was completely numb, and, and I fall on my back. He gets on top, lands a little elbow. Ref stops it, um, you know. In his mind, depending on how his mind works, I would assume he's got to know that wasn't like a – that wasn't a win. That wasn't me going out there and knocking out Howley on Pipe. That's a win. Right. Me knocking out Eddie Wineland. That's a win. Yeah, if someone Eddie get, lost that one. Yeah. Do you sleep like him last night? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, in in his mind, he's got to know. He's got to know that wasn't a, it's not a win. He wouldn't be so insecure about it. I mean, he wouldn't get so fucking fired up if he knew it was a win. He'd be like, what? I fucking knocked you out. But he gets fired up. But I think mentally he's a super strong kid, but I think his coaches saw the speed that you have and saw like, fuck, we got out of their best case scenario. So that's a like, big fight. He's got to say, he's got to say, yeah, I, I want it again. I'll do it again. He can't say anything else, but it's going to happen again. Well, I think there's something to, and do you think that, that Cheetah would have an advantage to having been in there with them before, been no. in there with Sean before? No. It, it, there wasn't, a, it wasn't, it, the fight was so quick. Right. If anything, it's worse for him well, that he knows how much faster I am than him. Right. He's got to have felt that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, what about this? Sorry, I'm just a big fan of hers. Um, <laughs> well, what about, uh, Oh fuck! There was someone I was gonna ask you, dog, about that. Yeah, I mean, it. it I don't know. It was. It was. Uh, yeah, I mean, look. It's. It, oh, here's one of the reasons I think probably people would get upset is because since you have more of a name also outside of the sport or congruent with the sport, right? You have like a an energy of vibe, right? You're also a commodity outside of it. That if they win or lose, kind of, you're still you had kind of have this other bravado that goes on. So I could understand probably that even if somebody beat you and, but people are still talking about you or you still have your show going, you still have a way to like be kind of winning each week in your own like world and stuff yeah. that people would be like, Oh, that pe- that it would rub people a little bit just because I think by nature, we all get jealous, you know, yeah. or, and I'm not saying he's jealous, but I think we all get you know, I I think that would just be normal. I th- I got a lot of hate for the undefeated, like even from other professional fighters. I mean, is it? You hear Col- Colby coming in was just sound the full sample. He's like, I feel like he said he feels like he's undefeated. He feels like those fights against Camaro, <laughs> he didn't lose. He thought he won in his mind. And it to uh, to random to other people, normal people, it sounds stupid. I get it, dude. I don't feel like I lost that fight. I do not feel like my skill set lost to his skill set. Yeah, I feel like it was a completely freak accident. Why hasn't it happened again? Why hasn't he's fought like three or four times? Why hasn't he kicked that nerve again? Right. It's something that fires me up. I love Joe Rogan, but God damn it. He, oh, I'd love to just watch that fight back with him. And he's like, oh, he kicked the, she kicked his legs right out from under him. It's like, yeah. he really didn't do. He landed one kick on my nerve with his toe. 
and it, obviously I, you see me get fired up about it. I, I'm going to get that rematch back. It's going to be a, a big fight. Um, so I mean, we'll so along happens. the way, that'd be a fight you'd like to have, probably. It's going to happen. Yeah, it just needs to make sense. It needs to make sense. My whole career's made sense. It just right. that fight will happen when it makes sense. Yeah. I don't Rob Font who do you think wins that? It's a very interesting matchup. Rob Font, Cheeto, five rounds in the smaller cage. Well, I think after that kind of thing you'll start to get a better idea. You know, that's a, that's the neatest thing about y'all sport is like while you're waiting for your fighter, you know, other there's other little pieces that are shifting and so you're like, Oh, the whole the landscape could look totally different, you know. And what about the dude Jolly uh more uh Gee, it's hard to read a lot of the right. It just, yeah. It's hard to get through it. Um, Zvashvili, you know. Oh, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. People no. forget about him just because his name's too hard to pronounce. Yeah. Yeah. People literally forget about him. I don't him. think they forget about him because his name's hard to pronounce. I think they forget about him because he's he's the typical like kind of wrestler. Yeah. When like, he fights, it's time to go get a snack. Or, it's not or like entertaining. There's no va- like there's nothing. There's right. no plus like side to that those fights. Right. Right. He's a tough motherfucker. Good motherfucker. There's mm-hmm. just no... Like if that fights, like if I'm champ and he's next, that fight happens. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's exciting, dude. It's that like, division's on fire right now. We got fucking Jose so Aldo, TJ Dillashaw, Corey Sanag, and Peter Aljo. Like the fucking division's on fire. Cody, yeah. Cody's coming back up. I think Cody's going back up to to bantamweight or Bellator, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, will you even forget about Dillashaw that he just came back? I mean, he had the one fight against Sanag. That's it, right? That fight was so impressive. Coming off the EPO, everyone knew, everyone was questioning him. For him to go out there, lose the first couple rounds to Corey, get his ACL or whatever torn off in the first round, for him to adjust and adapt and be able to pull off the victory, but that's also a close fight. Like Corey says, he thinks he won that fight. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people thought he won that fight, close fight, but for TJ to actually get that victory, that was fucking huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's sick, man. That whole division. Did, did sick. you uh, rewatch Peter versus Aljo yet? I I rewatched some of the fights they post on YouTube, and they they just recently posted that. Oh uh, no, I haven't rewatched it. I remember watching it live, and I remember thinking that Peter was going to win, but then surprised that Aljo kind of kept it going. So, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it was slowly getting bad for Aljo yeah. towards the end there. Like there was still like ten, nine, eight minutes left or whatever to fight. And Peter would didn't look like he was slowing down. Well Peter would like kind of go down and he'd, he every time he was moving he was throwing throwing just uh punches. Every time he was moving everything he it was like it's like he couldn't even not throw a punch. It's like you could shake his hand and he would also punch you. You know? <laughs> it's like he couldn't help yeah. it like he's Russian. Yeah. Oh you dude I mean? Russian that's why I think Russian might be the hardest to knock. I think Russian seems. I mean, you guys would know a lot better, but Russian seems like the hardest. Snow Brothers, a lot of people call Snow them. Brothers. Yeah. Uh, they seem like the hardest to knock out, dude. We'll see. I'm, I'm excited to fight Peter someday. He's a little fucker's tough, fight. dude. He's you, sick to watch. Like Terminator, too. dude. Yeah. He's not like a. He. I think he is capable of grappling and kind of being like a hardcore grappler. Like he's capable of it, a skill set. But the dude likes to box. He likes to fucking fight, like actually fight and entertain, which is, I think, what I respect so much about him. Yeah. That he has the skill set to be boring like Marab yeah. or someone like that, but he chooses to be a fucking gangster. Sick Damn. to watch. You see, Colby was really pushing for the Israel Adesanya fight. <sighs> oh, he was? Yeah. Him against Israel? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'll say this about Colby, man. He does a great job of kind of position. You don't realize it, but he positions himself into these great fights. Yeah. Well, yeah, he doesn't get finished. Like, the fights are close enough to where it's like, okay, that you know, because he didn't get finished by Kamaru. If uh-uh. he got finished, it's like a, it puts you in a different situation, a different position to be able to, he can't call out, is he? Yeah. Now it's like, oh, he, he's coming off a loss, but people are still like, oh, yeah, that would be interesting. And Israel's kind of the defender of the free world in a weird way, so I could see him taking that just to go and like, wanna, I'm going to shut this guy up or something kind of thing. I don't think UFC makes that. Coming off a loss, never been UFC welterweight champ. Like I mean, after yeah. Jared Cannonier, they might. Yeah, I mean, because what's next? What would be next for Izzy? He's fucking ran through everyone's division, so he's got to fight Jan- Jared Cannonier, and then after that, maybe Colby would happen. Dude. Unless Jared yeah. clocks Izzy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, you never know. Fighting fucking crazy. Yeah, right, it's fucking wild. It's a wild, yeah. It's and it's just gotten wilder. I mean, during the pandemic, because I, you got, I saw you guys before the pandemic. I saw y'all at the fights. At the um, what was the last one? I, I don't guess. remember, but I remember always watching my fight back. I know it was the green-haired fight when I fought him. Uh, at the end of the fight, it's panning through the 
through the uh, audience and they're boom, they're steel. You're like, yeah, that's <laughs> sick. Perk. Yeah, that was cool, man. The last one was great too, man. The one where you fought uh, per Pirate. Howley and Paiva. Yeah. Yeah, that was a sick fight. That was a sick fight, dude. That was a that was just a great fight to be at too. Um, so you guys have had a kind of a lot of downtime, right? Dude, after my fight, I think there was about two months where it was like, you know, every not every weekend, but a lot of the weekends we were in LA. Yeah. We didn't go to Miami. We are, I think we might have went to LA a couple times partied here a couple times which is rare we don't usually party here but i actually oh i'd flown out a bunch of my twitch subscribers from they all lived at and home took with their out? parents took them to the club oh, bought a limo no. old school 1999 lincoln limo flew them out never been to a party or never been to a club a couple of them were virgins oh yeah took them to the club popped a little uh little uh right yeah. had them fucking just dance had the time of their fucking lives wow. dude it was legendary and uh yeah so we went out out in phoenix which is rare we don't usually go out here who did i mean oh i met some girl i was in new orleans <clears throat> and she's like oh sugar she's like sugar sean said we should bang because we both have the same birthday i'm Me like and her yeah. you and her no she said that she said that i was like that's such a great pickup <laughs> line oh we have the same birthday we should fuck yeah it makes we sense do. i mean if we were born <laughs> on the same day might as well fuck. Yeah, obviously the astrologists want it. Um, That's true. Is there any like um, I was trying to think of some good products for different like like uh, different fighters that would be good, you know, for podcasters? No, for, po for uh, supplements. I'm kind of changing the subject, I guess. Yeah, I was just thinking of like different, um, like like what if Herb Dean made like alarm clocks, you know, or Whoa. like. I'm just trying to think what would be neat because a lot of guys could have a cool product. I think they don't kind of have one, you know. I'm just trying to think of what something like that would be, you know. Yeah, some. Yeah, it takes. Yeah, marketing or products and shit is a whole other fucking skill outside of fighting that some people have, some people don't. You uh had, had Bryce Bryce Mitchell on a couple times. He seems like a fucking character. Oh yeah, love his lifestyle. He's that's fucking hilarious. Like just him. Well, one thing I noticed about Bryce, especially remember when he gave, when he spoke after that win, which it was interesting at the beginning of that fight, you kind of saw like, okay, here's Bryce Mitchell. He's like more, you know, he that's a, it's a big step up in class. That's, just in in, yeah. in the hypothetical class of of these, you know, the history of yeah. these men. So you're like, this is going to be interesting. You felt it when the cage closed. You're like, this is like kind of like a boy goes up the mountain kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And and then he just, I mean, he just controlled the whole thing. And then afterwards he was like, I'll, I'll defend my land. Like I'm not supporting this war, but I'll defend my homeland, my Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And that shit was interesting to me because I'm like, that's kind of where people are getting, I think, a little bit. People are like, I'm not buying into some of this Amer like this bullshit fighting somebody else's war type of shit. Yeah. But I'll defend my yard, you know? Like I'll defend my my home territory. I just felt like you can kind of start to feel that in the world a little bit, you know? Like people are like there's so much dark arts kind of going on out there about um like what the government's really doing with, you know, using like troops and all of this yeah. and what their real intentions are. Well, it's crazy Russia, like they don't have internet. They don't have they're Russian uh, state news. So whatever they put out is the only news the Russians can wow. see. So they don't really know that they're invading Damn. Ukraine or whatever. They think they're they're fighting Ukraine for a different reason. What? Mm. So Russia has no Wi-Fi? I don't think they do right now. I, right? Can you look that up? Someone but then how up? do those women send all those pictures to us yeah. then? How's Peter tweet? Peter's not living in Russia. He was oh, in he like th um, uh, Thailand and shit. Can you look that up, Chad? But their only source of news is like s Russian news. Well, dude, I remember when I went to I went to Cuba one time, right? When I was in college, and we uh, the library there started with when Fidel and uh, Che Guevara's were in. They started power, so the the history of Cuba started then, like Damn. in their library. So you couldn't learn yeah anything else you that. wanted to find you had to like get your grandmother to tell you or them to sneak you a book like if you went to the library that was what it was you know oh, yeah history dude it's weird because growing up i'm like why the fuck would i i mean it's 
why would I? I don't care what happened before. I'm just living in the future, baby. Yeah. And uh, now, I mean, it's kind of interesting. I don't really go about it and look for it, but it's more interesting now. But growing up, I was like, I don't give a fuck what happened. Well, the only thing you have growing up is the future. Like, at a certain point, your life starts to get more past in it. So you mm-hmm. start to think, I think, about the history more. Yeah. Because your own life is like, oh, now I got 26 years. I got 27 years. You know, my life, I have a little more history. Let me maybe contemplate it. But when all you have is the future, yeah. like, you're like, fuck that shit. Fuck well, the I'm Mayflower. Like seventh grade, getting a boner, yeah, fucking when someone says anything. Anything. I'm like, whoa. Huh. And yeah. They're trying to teach me about fucking Sacagawea. And then I'm listening. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. The, but yeah, you're like, fuck the Mayflower. The fact that they're even teaching kids history is insane, dude. Yeah. When a kid, all they care about is the future, you know? Some, dude, I remember having one buddy who was just obsessed. Like, a hist- like that dude should be learning about it and then progressively learning more and more. Yeah. But for someone like me, it's like, don't waste your time. I know. Pussy don't teach mind, me anything. Let me- Could you have been a pilgrim or something, you think? Be honest with me. Dude, I'm a pussy. I can't do shit. I can't make a fire. I can't. He's rather helpless. I'm pretty helpless really? when it comes yeah. to it. Yeah. And the more money I make, the worse I get. Like, no, yeah. I guess I've been better. I've been getting ripped and doing laundry and dishes like recently a couple times. Because for the most part, it's like I don't do. You got to do dishes fast to get ripped for doing it, I feel like. Yeah. I get high throwing my AirPods, throwing a podcast, and like you, I can find enjoyment. I send Tim a video, be like, dude, I'm fucking doing the dishes. Doing the dishes. <laughs> cool. How often do you guys see each other? Uh, Five times a week. Oh, yeah, all the time. Most, mostly at training, though. Mo- yeah, Monday we train together, Tuesday we train together. We went there, I don't know. Yeah, randomly we do the pods Sundays. The more popular that you guys get and the more that your life kind of gets bigger with fighting, do you have to be careful who you spar with and stuff? Do you get a lot more selective with that? Or what does that kind of look like? Yeah, I mean, as far as actual sparring leading up for a fight, like sparring, headgear, mouth guard, shin pads, all that shit, I don't spar outside of camp. I haven't for years. I spar. Once I get a fight booked, I'll start sparring. As sparring grappling-wise, I mean, you don't. If there's a new kid and he just looks like a complete fucking spaz or a huge guy, I'll avoid him. But usually we pick the rounds for him when we're going in training camp and it's eight weeks out. Try to figure out who's the best, then we pick the right kids. Okay. Because we, I mean, it's so hard to say. You got to. I feel like you have to spar leading up to a fight. You got to get the timing down. You got to get that that same energy, that same fucking feeling as a fight. Um, but you also don't want to go in there and have a fight of the night, $50,000 fight of the night, or a fight of the night round, or a fucking crazy round. Like, you don't want to get hurt sparring. That's where nine, like, uh, uh, so many people get hurt sparring. Yeah. And it's just where I'd rather go into a fight healthy with, le- like, less intense intensity sparring than be like, damn, I sparred so fucking hard for this camp, but my hand can't make a fist. Yeah. Or my head kind of hurts going into this fight. I'd rather feel healthy going into a fight. Yeah. You try to get, how many practices of jiu-jitsu you try to get a month? Um, That's a good question, man. I would say eight to ten. Wow. it's good. If I can. It's been hard just kind of with moving around and stuff like that. And then sometimes it's like I got to do, I got to make sure I'm yoga up enough to get in there too. Just so I just want to be prepared. Yeah. A good warm up is so fucking important, dude. And I kept getting damaged up. Like big dudes would come in at, you know, like big bear or whatever, you know, this guy. And And the guy always has a name. Yeah. Yeah. This dude name. Yeah. Everybody, you know, bear or friggy or whatever, you know, something. I'm like, I don't want to be around this guy, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And the guy's so warm. You're like trying to fight him and he's just so big. All you can tell is just that he's warm. And uh, so there's been, I've taken some damage a couple times where I had to sit out for three weeks, you know? That's it part of it. the worst, part, dude. Yeah. And it's inevitable. It's going to happen. It sucks. Have y'all been approached by some of them stem cell joints? Y'all thought about getting stemmed up? I mean, I would. Um, I haven't, though. Yeah, no, not really. Never. I don't even know if, I don't even think you're allowed to in the UFC. I don't know what the stem cell laws are, rules are, or any of that shit. So I don't know. People do them. The, yeah yeah i think poirier got some in his hip you know or something oh because he had a torn labrum i'm pretty sure right so, labrum like i think is i've had i've had labrum surgery hip surgery labrum yeah. torn labrum yeah you got them in your shoulders too wow yeah some people do you probably don't <laughs> yeah i might not have them I, what's next um, for poirier speaking of you know what i mean he wanted to fight nate nate doesn't really seem to like that's gonna happen colby and dustin would be such a sick fucking fight, dude. Yeah. I think Dustin knows 
that Colby is a motherfucker to fight, dude. He is his car. He's not gonna get tired. He's his wrestling's elite. His striking's it's weird because his striking's kind of sloppy, but it's very effective in MMA, especially with his threat, the takedown. I bet Dustin looks at that fight like, God damn it, dude! I do not want to lose to that motherfucker. I don't even know if it's worth fighting him. Right? Maybe. Will you weigh out Nate and Colby? Come on. Like, so yeah, you want that Nate fight? Yeah, yeah, you want the Nate fight, and also it's like you know the Nate fight is probably gonna go the distance. It's just gonna be a f- just people hitting each other. Yeah. It's gonna be a real dog fight. But Dustin versus Colby is very interesting because Dustin's a motherfucker, dude. Oh yeah. Throws yeah. bombs. Also has good pace. Yeah, I don't think he. It doesn't seem like he want. He doesn't want to give Colby that, like you deserve to yeah. fight. You know, it's, I could see that for sure. It's a big yeah. fight. You know what yeah. I mean? And Dustin has. You know, I, I feel like that in certain ways. Like I don't want to give people big fights. I just don't. Yeah, you know, they don't deserve it. Is there a guy out there that's even in front of you that you feel like this is? I wouldn't do it. Uh, I don't know. Just give him the opportunity. Like, yeah. Well, that's kind of how I feel with the Cheeto rematch. Like, I don't really, you, you earn it. Well, like, that's what I'm saying. It'll happen when it happens. Like, build yourself up. Make your a name. I made a name for Cheeto. Like, he's got a name because of me. Build yourself up. Build, you know, let's build the big a big fight. Well, say, you say, uh, Jan wins, right? Okay. Then what? Then who's, because Sandhagen and Jan fought. Yeah. TJ's probably next. Oh, I'd wow. Say. Or TJ versus Aldo or TJ versus Dominic Cruz is super interesting. Um, you know, I don't think Rob Cheeto, I don't think the winner of that gets a, gets a title fight. Yeah. Uh, I'd say TJ is probably next, I, I, would, I would guess. When you, um, yeah, and who's who does Sanhagen fight? Winner of Rob Cheeto, and then for that would be a title eliminator maybe. A, I mean, fuck. there's there's the yeah. whole division, there's just so many fucking like, and you have to like look at it. it's, it's going to take a year you know That's every a, time it's like this is a year and a half later is that person still going to be in and what's going to be going on yeah it's pretty captivating you know it's super it's super interesting. it's crazy to think about like the MLB NFL, NFL NBA like it's like they just play every weekend so multiple times a week sometimes yeah. fighting it's like if you get three fights in a year it's like a lot it's a good amount oh yeah and also it's hard to even like UFC became my favorite sport. Like MMA became my favorite sport. It's interesting. Like probably over the pandemic because it was available, and um, yeah, and it was just I don't know. It, it was there. Yeah, it was just there. First of all, yeah. and it didn't seem like a bitch. Like the re- everything else seemed to like turn into such a pussy fat. It was just like NBA is weird because it's like sometimes like on the f- beginning of the game it doesn't really seem like it's more like I'd watch the fourth quarter. Right. What was your favorite before fighting? I think it was NFL. Was it? But now you start to know the player. It doesn't seem like there's any beef between the teams that much anymore. Like, I think that's one thing that UFC still has. You know. It's the president. That's right. all Dana White. You know that they still have beef. These guys, there's still beef between them. The money isn't so much that that one of them is going to say, oh, let's just have a good time out here. Like, the NBA players, they're all friends now. There's just not as much competition. It, like, yeah See, like i have to win this yeah i guess there's probably like like tom brady it seems like that like there's there's those competitors lebron james like right yeah and fighting it's fucking life or death really like you could die in there i guess football's similar but but everybody's just so controlled in what they say in those places like they all have publicists that may so nobody's like hey fuck the dolphins yeah i'm gonna be, i hope you we really... beat the fuck out of the dolphins like if one player said that they would be the favorite player in a week. They yeah. can't say that. They're legally not allowed to, I don't think, in their contracts. Wow. To be able, like, their Twitter has to be certain. Like, like look at AB now, Adrian Brown. Look at him going crazy now. He's not in the NFL. He can say whatever the fuck he wants, and he's yeah. being himself, and he's a whole different character now. Do you think he got paid when it, for Full Send Podcast? Do you think he got paid that next day? I'm sure they cut him some. I think for certain guests like that, like I think Full Send paid Kodak Black. I think they paid certain guys that are that level to get on there. Yeah. So yeah, they they probably cut up a little chizak. Like what, fifty stacks? I don't know. I couldn't even guess. I would bet it would be around there, maybe at least thirty. I would bet thirty to cruise in. <sighs> yeah. And if you just lost your job, I think you're like, all right, I'll take it. Dude. Well, he was. I mean, Ab was fucking. He went on the Impulsive podcast after that, and we yeah. just spitting out sponsors. I'll tell you something that gets under my gizzard, bro. And I'll tell you this. 
that sometimes you get subscriptions and they redo without you doing it. They re-up. They get you. They re-up. You order that, you know, whatever it is, a Diet Pepsi subscription, and they keep sending it to you, but just wanted one box of it. Well, thankfully, uh, that's changing thanks to Truebill. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. That's right. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Yeah, because sometimes it sneaks through you don't know. Four years later, you've been playing, you're paying for, uh, you know, uh, what is it called? Um, Dance Dance Revolution um, Club. Anyway, uh, because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. That's right. Truebill has over 2 million users and helps save them over $100 million. That's a lot. Don't fall for subscription scams. A lot of scammers out there, people, burglars. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash T-H-E-O. Go right now, Truebill.com slash Theo. It could save you thousands a year. Is your, uh, you still in the same spot in LA? Same studio? Or you move? Uh, well, I think oh, we're moving actually. Cause you're, I got a house in Nashville to... now. Oh shit, that's right. So, so you go back and forth. Yeah, I go back yeah. and forth. So, How's that? Is that tough? Do you feel like you're at home, like more home and at one or the other? It's like, I literally like having two different worlds kind of. Is it kind of sick though? Uh, it's nice because you can like, okay, I'm here and I'm doing this for a couple weeks and then I'm here. And I I'm bet that like, is kind of nice. This is kind of cool. And you get to meet like totally different people. It's like a lot more of a down to earth vibe in Nashville. A lot of beautiful women there. Ooh. Friendly people, country music. You kind of get in with a different group. Uh, Kid Rock lives there. So you get to like Damn. hang out with some real fucking, you know, hill animals, you so know? Hill animals. Yeah. yeah. So you, uh, what's, what's your, uh, you've been talking to many ladies or what how do you go about that yeah i've been doing some dating dude um what's going on yeah i've been doing some dating i'm not sure sometimes i feel like i want to have more of like a real spouse you know yeah so i'm even thinking more like wife hunt a little 2022 I feel, wife I feel like hunt. You, you know i got it's hard though because you meet a girl one time she's on her best behavior she's not on her period she's not hungry like she's well, dressed up especially when you're, you're already popular that's the like, thing. i'm so thankful i met danny before i had money before anything before i was anyone like i met danny she liked me you know for who i was and then that was nice i bet it's hard dating trying to find an actual partner now that you're you know you're a celebrity it's i bet it's tr trickier yeah, I think I've always had a pretty good feel for like real thotty type of chicks or some chick that's just after, you know, like yeah. I think and I want more like a like I'm thinking like a mother to a child. You know what I'm saying? I start thinking about that kind of stuff. Mexicans like, are are good. <clears throat> oh, dude. I, I I've already every time I see a Mexican, I'm like I want to be Mexican, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, every time. I yeah. tell them straight up, dude. And they yeah. and I, I technically am Mexican now. Really? Yeah, cuz like Danny's Mexican, I'm uh -huh. white. We had a baby. Yeah. Elena's half Mexican. We have the same DNA. Therefore, I'm half Mexican. This sounds it's like some sweet UFC math, dude. Um, I will say this, though, dude. What if you started fucking looking Mexican, dog? I'm trying. Crazy. Bro, trying. you got to know. I think you got to do the uh, Mexican colors in the hair. Yeah, I, I think we could, we could do something like that. And you got to get like a prison thing. God, I should have kept my fucking tat. I had a tat right here that said something. Brown pride. Wasn't Carnal it? or something. You <laughs> need one like uh, oh, yeah. Carnal. Or what's the one they always put? Or so, Familia. You, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> need something hard, bro. Familia. Familia. And you need like just two Mexican kids like walking behind you at all times, That'd bro. That would be sick. I'm, I mean, we might have another one someday. Yeah? Yeah, you never know. Do you we, guys think about well, it? Well, honestly, after watching the Kardashians, it makes me want to have, like, they're seeing the sisters' relationship. It's funny because they're always fucking arguing, fighting, but... It just makes you want like a super cool. Like me and my brother and sister, like we have our own our relationships. It makes you fucking kind of want to have a little tribe. Yeah. But I also want to just get like a black girl pregnant, an Asian girl pregnant. I want to have like a bunch of different. Danny doesn't really like that, but it's accidents happen. You know what I mean? Do you like yeah. Kim Kardashian's butt? What do you mean? What I sit on it? No. Do you well, like it? Would you Would you be like, yeah, I want I want that butt. Oh, I'd be on that thing. Would you? Dude. I'd be on it like that dude that puts out the like the orange land equipment and he's like lining up oh, things and stuff like that, yeah. like when they're building the sidewalk. 
Yeah. I would be like, and he leaves something overnight for some reason. Like, what the fuck? I is heard that Kim thing? and Pete might not be doing too good. Is that true? Dude, she rolled up to the party sans Pete, you know? And she looked like exactly like you thought, like this, this, uh, just a queen because the party you got there and then you had to go up this, she was there she was there she rolled in with like bat girl did you talk to her bat girl heidi klum her and somebody else there was just so much like fineness i couldn't even see after the oh. third person like it was literally did you talk to her <clears throat> hey hi how are you going? no ah i don't know if she saw me up. it was really really fast i met her before years ago but i don't know if she would remember damn kim um, we you trying to catch her attention at all at the party, trying to do a little something cool? No, because we were leaving when they was coming in. I would have fell in front of her or something. Oh, dude, I they had. Something. I mean, they just had so many, like, um, I mean, just every, the, Kevin Bacon. I mean, just so many. The, it, the whole party was absolutely just A-list. surreal. It was a, a It was like. I don't even know any of those people you named. Yeah. But Leonardo just, DiCaprio. I've heard of him. Um, Why do you say that like you want to fuck him? But I think also Did you see that Jay? Yeah. It's like Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, wow. It's could, fine. Could you if you had to go for a big dog like that, who would you go for? Because I feel like if you showed up in the afternoon, one of them would fuck you. Yeah, oh, Leo. God. Not at night though. At night there's a level of diciness that comes with this. Yeah. But you show up afternoon time with a tennis thing on. Oh and I mean, your gold chain. I mean, that's a different yeah. world out there, isn't it? Those kind of endless really parties. Just like, oh, it was. You could tell that they I guess could just. I've never, we've never been. They could afford anything. They could cure AIDS if they wanted to. You could just smell it in the air. Like, they even had like little hors d'oeuvres, like, oh, these cure AIDS if you want one. Damn. You're like, damn. It's like, why should we, should we tell people about that? Like, no, no, no. <laughs> nah, it's just for us. Just for us. They had all of it, bro. They had stem cells. They were running around. The whole place was just. There's IV stations oh, set it up. Was, oh, it was magical. Yeah. It was magical. And there was a couple, somebody had let in a couple stray busters, bro. Just some fucking real animal dudes, bro. Just regular guys, like right? Like Tim and I. And fun. this, yeah, oh, just regular, like as if we, it, it's. And it, the funny thing is, the dudes knew me immediately, right? So I was like, oh. That's my crowd, yeah. baby. <laughs> and this dude's just over there. I think he's from Ireland or something. He was just doing rails off this table by himself. And then that's it's like, a, that's us. Like 20, 20 minutes later. He was just looking just like this. And he was holding his girl's hand, but like with the straightest arm ever. Like he was so geeked out. <laughs> like he out. might have had a little fentanyl in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. Like he was early to that fentanyl. <laughs> do y'all run a fentanyl test or have JX or somebody do a little bump first? Or how do you guys run it? <laughs> yeah, Tim usually takes care of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <God. laughs> no, no. We're fucking drug free. <clears throat> have you had a night where you're like, that was too much? Like, we, yes. did, we, did you go to the ER ever? No. Yeah. You think about it? I've thought about it. No. The ER. I mean, I I'd always know I'm going to come around. Give me a couple days. I'm going to fucking be all right. Yeah. Yeah. You do IVs much? Well, you don't really fucking yeah. do, do much. You don't do Adderalls. You don't do scotch-free on the drugs besides caffeine? Uh Oh, I did ayahuasca. <clears throat> so I went and did ayahuasca ceremony. So that's a drug. In Peru? Man. Uh, or just in uh I did that shit right off the one on one in LA, dude. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Dude, I was 180 feet from like a um Popeyes actually. <laughs> you could smell the like in the afternoon, like a, I guess three times a day they do biscuits over there when they do like the bakes. And um you could smell them at each time and it would definitely liven up the freaking Ooh. ayahuasca vibe. That's You'd be it. sitting there just bawling, crying, and suddenly it's just like has Hungry. this whole biscuity vibe, yeah. That's funny. Um, that was pretty next level. I'm sure there's a lot of it out here in the desert because a lot of there's a lot of like bootleg Indians out here too. Yeah, that's see ayahuasca kind of kind of scares me. I would I think I'm gonna you know I'll do it eventually. I'd like to go and do it like Peru, go into the jungle and fucking do it for real, maybe wait for till real. after fighting. Yeah. Well, Tucson they got a lot of peyote down there, man. Yeah, Tucson. Yeah. They call it. I used to live down there. I we've never really been down there too much. What is it? Two hours from us, Jay? Tucson? Yeah, we don't really go down there too much. It's a lot of like, I remember it was a lot of like men with dream catchers, which was an interesting vibe, you know? You don't see that with men. Huh. <laughs> Wow. And what else, dude? A lot of people, uh, a lot of people like making rock shapes in their yard. Kind that of like thing. rock stacking? Yeah, like, yeah, different, like little baby. Uh, like that's their landscape, just like some rock stack. Yeah, like that's baby, kind of what are those things called? Baby uh, altars or like little altars and stuff, kind of. Some Jesus uh, shit? Mm, not quite. More like moon wolf shit. Oh, okay. A lot of moon wolf junkies down there. Uh, a lot of feather, you know, feather bitches like that. 
Um, Feather bitches. Yeah, like... I like all sorts of... I'm not really picky. What about you? About what? Women. Oh, you want to talk about women, then. I see you, well, you, you motherfuckers want to talk about some puss, huh? Yeah, well, it's just on I mean, my mind 24 7 Is it really? Time. My you, testosterone level, I feel like, is pretty high. I think I constantly... You know, if I can bust, if we could, uh, if I could bust a good solid twice in a day, and then the next day I feel like I'll be like kind of normal, and then my kid, my test or my chi will start building up again. But it's on my mind a lot, like just smashing biscuits. Do you? Will you refuse to uh, touch yourself with your own hand? I I haven't in a long not yeah I haven't in a while been been using Danny. Have you done or, the Oculus porn? I've done the Oculus porn one time, but it wasn't like. It was just. It was basically just watching Safari, like the Pornhub on the Oculus. So it wasn't oh. like you were walking around the room. Oh. The Oculus porn. I did that once. It was really cool. Is it scary? Uh, no, no. I, I it wasn't depends scary. Depends what pops up. Depends what pops up. Is it like almost too real that you're like, oh man, I don't know if this would be. Uh, if I keep coming back to this, it could get addictive. Does it make you not want to interact with the real Oculus women? The Oculus porn? Yeah. Well, it's the way, the, I don't know if there's like different Oculus porn where you can actually like feel you, like you're actually there. So I was just, basically the one I watched was like watching porn like this. Oh. So you do feel kind of like you're in the room, but it's not as if you are. Right. Like I think you could, there's probably different Oculus porn to where it's like, whoa, I just fucked her. Right. Like maybe you put on a full body suit and certain that interactions would be, happen. See, that yeah. would be dra- that would be dangerous because then I'd be smack like Kim or whatever. Yeah. Or I mean, that's cert- going to happen soon. Certain holes around the house that that Oculus leads you to. Oh. Well, that, and then that's going to be like, you'll pay a certain amount and you'll be able to have sex with this person or Damn. you'll get this will happen. You know, or something like will a come. certain pay pay a certain amount to some girls only fans, and you yeah. can Oculus fucker. Yeah, yeah, I'd do that. Or then do also, you subscribe to any chicks Oculus uh, only fans? I've gotten on there two times and then deleted it immediately after I ended up dirty. touching my own body. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive my friend deal for the sins. Amen. Yeah, dude, that shit makes you feel dark when you're out there just because once you shut your phone down and stuff, you just feel def- it feels like a defeat. It's different than having sex. Yeah, Jay and off is it, different. Sometimes though, like honestly, I just need to to be able to carry on throughout the day. I just need really? to just get it out the way. Hit up a little. If my back's sore, I need a massage. I'll go there just to and like I'll leave and I'll be like, oh, I can focus. I can go stream. I can go play. I can go play video games with the boys. I could work on my merch. I can make, shoot a blog. But I just got to get that out the way sometimes. And that could be also one of the things what makes you like a fighter. Like do you just have that uh, that that other level of because if you got to ejacu- ejaculate two times in a day that seems like i don't have to i mean right but it helps you i could right yeah it helps me feel just like normal i think you know tim deals with it similar too i think it might be being an alpha just a fucking hardcore training like and we eat good we sleep good like our body's running how it should right well maybe it's not that too because you do it do you have an issue with beating off i don't like beating off that much oh I would rather keep my keep chi. my chi, yeah, because yeah. I just feel like it's like it feels like a a waste, like not a waste, but it feels like I feel like a waste is a good word for a waste of that energy. I do like jacking off. Is that in our minds from previous shit? Co- conditioned, I conditioned. Because do animals jack off? Whoa, whoa! My do- I mean, my dog's humping all the time. He was fucking yeah. the yoga ball. Was it? Yeah, two nights ago. Oh yeah. Well, even your girl ball. dog's just rubbing her little pussy on everything. So <laughs> animals, just, so animals, if animals could jack off, they wouldn't. And, and um, <laughs> I think they would a lot. Monkeys jack. Oh, especially a sloth. Once you got that freaking, oh. finally got that cock in his hand, though. Dude, yeah, I bet monkeys however. probably put fingers in their butts and jay off. Oh, probably. Huh? <laughs> Dude, wow. we're just animals, just smarter slash dumber animals. Yeah, with more capability of getting off. What do you think would be the toughest animal to fight, like in an actual sanctioned bout? Like a like similar size animal, probably. Dude, monkeys. Monkeys are they're so athletic. They yeah. can do so much shit. They're so strong. Well, let's go non primate then, because a monkey is just like a human. Like yeah. outside of that, what would be the toughest animal to really <sighs> go? Google fuck with an elk. 
I'd fucking elk up. Or buffalo. But elk have them horns, so you'd be able to manage their head and their, you know, you're going to be able to have con- that in control. Your fucking stomach. Yeah. Yeah, elk would be tough. Turtle would be tough, too, because they can just, you wouldn't be able to get like uh, yeah, a good shot off. Well, you wouldn't be able to get, um, take their back. Yeah. Yeah. Porcupine. Because they would just, yeah, keep putting their porcupine head in. Porcupine would fuck be hard to take their back. Oh. You know what I mean? You imagine you fuck up and take a porcupine's back? Ouch. <laughs> You're just back yeah, there. Just, I mean, you would, he wouldn't be able to get you off. Yeah. Or you wouldn't be able to get off, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know, dude. You want kids? I guess you got to find that right boot thing, right? Yeah, I think so, man. I think it's sometimes it's just like I think I put more like pressure into it than yeah. it is, you know? Right. Because like you just had, were you expecting to have a child? No, accident. Yeah. Complete and it accident. seems like it's been a real blessing. It, it was probably the biggest blessing in my life because I got a lot of money and a lot of fame shortly after that to where I don't know if I would have been able to really stay hum- stay grounded because I ain't humble, you know what I mean? But I'm more grounded. Yeah. Just because you meet guys like Steve and fucking Kyle and 6 9 and fucking Bradley and fucking Logan and Jake. And, like, you have all these opportunities. Like, yo, come to Puerto Rico. Yo, come to Miami. Yo, come hang out with 42 Doug. Like, Steve texts me. He's like, yo, get on a plane. Come hang out with Lil Baby and 42 Doug. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. I could. Yeah. I could be there in six hours. But, you know, having Elena and, and Danny fucking keeps me just, like, it really, what it is, after my fights, I deal with way more anxiety. I deal with anxiety because my sleep schedule is not as good. I'm fucking partying. I'm drinking. I'm doing alcohol. And uh, I deal with anxiety. But when I'm in this phase where I'm at right now, training consistently, like my body's healthy. I can train. I don't really have that anxiety. I'm not. I'm, I'm comfortable with everything with my life. So, But I'm still going. Like after my next fight, I'm still going to go party. And no, I'm going to have that anxiety. I'm going to have deal with that fucking everything that comes with that life. But I always know, like, I can always, it takes me about two weeks to kind of, if I just do the same routine that I know I can be content mm. with with life. So, yeah, having Elena saved my fucking life. And I I, I truly believe that. Because I'm wow. a crazy motherfucker, dude. I'm scared of sugar sometimes. Like, I don't want to let sugar out. Really? I get nervous when I think about, like, after my fights, I'm like, okay. Sometimes I'm like, dude, I don't want to party. Don't make, don't make me do this. And I really, I want to, but I'm also like, I, sh- I don't want to. Because that leads to right. Things. You don't know how hard, how far you, you, how far you'll go. Yeah, each time it goes a little bit further too. Well, this time was a little bit less pride than the last fight. Right, which not by a lot, but it was a little bit less. So maybe I'm managing it a little bit better. But I also never partied in high school. Never partied in college. So these are kind of like my college partying days. Damn. Yeah, so that's a lot of pressure because then you get it now at a point when you have access to everything. Oh, it's da- it's scary. It's a, it's dangerous. Yeah, and yeah, with that, if Elena wasn't in the picture, it could be a lot worse. Going back to you having kids, you should just find the hottest chick, knock her up. You know what I mean? But the hottest chick is that necessarily because you're. But wife, then you get a fucker every time. You have to what? Oh, you, you get, get a like, every time. Yeah. But what if she's a shit mom though? No, that's important. You're right. I don't want some. You're I don't right. want to be driving around and I got two baby seats and my wife's in fucking one of them. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. You make her, make sure she's Mexican, dude. Yeah, I'm Mexican. And how easy is it to meet a Mexican woman? Where do you meet them at? Well, I mean, LA, LA's probably got a lot. I mean, Arizona's got a fuck ton. Yeah, majority. Go, you yeah. go down to Mexico. I bet there's a couple down there. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would like to go back to. I've never been to Mexico because the way Danny's like uh, green card is or whatever. Uh-huh. It's like she can't, she can't really leave the country right now. She can, but getting back's questionable. It's like, God, that sounds dicey. Yeah, so it's like we're not, we haven't really risked leaving anywhere. But I'd love to go to Mexico, dude. I love Mexican women. Are you a bone? Are you uh, contractually like a Mexican? Like, can you get a? Do you have a Mexican um, passport? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Is there specific passports? I don't know. But Danny said Elena yeah. is going to be dual yeah, citizen. Oh, really? Be. Yeah. Do Mexican? Do they even have a passport? I don't know. Mexicans just go wherever they want. Kind yeah, of. I, I don't know. I don't know, dude. Home Depot. <laughs> it's just like wherever. Um, that's what I was thinking for the gym because we got to move all those mats here. We should make a sick vlog, dude. Pull up in the limo, pick up like seven, eight Mexicans from Home Depot, just like and pay them good and train them. If you did a short training session with them, <laughs> damn, put them all in like cool shorts and stuff. <laughs> that would be idea. fire. Some sugar gear, get them gassed up, bro, and damn. then fucking put them on the mat. <laughs> One I guy's just like, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, God, I, like YouTube and vlogs and shit. 
I could I would love to do that full time. Really? Like, it would be so fun for me and I feel like it would be so much less like pain cuz training fucking dude I'm sore every day. Like every day you deal with little injuries, you fucking sore. Dude, being a full-time YouTuber, I don't think I would be it wouldn't be as fulfilling cuz I believe my destiny is to be the UFC champ. I have to do that. I can't fucking do anything else. I have to do that. But I make vlogs, little vlogs here on the side and shit. But being a full-time YouTuber doing shit like that, being creative, coming up with those ideas like would be fucking fun. And seeing Steve and all those guys just constantly making banger YouTube videos like I get FOMO for sure. Yeah. Little FOMO. And just, we're like, God, that'd be sick. I could be there. I could be making my own shit. Well, now you kind of have the both. You ha you have the best of both worlds right now. You know, you got both options, so that's 100%. really nice. Hundred percent. And the one will always be there late. I mean, you can always make vlogs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the thing I remind myself a lot. I'm like, dude, I'm 27 right now. I'm in my prime till I'm 34, 35, or whatever. I have to become champ in these years. Yeah. I don't I can't do it when I'm 40. I got to right now I got to fucking do what I got to do. And I have to remind myself that a lot. Cuz sometimes I get carried away. I'd be like, ah, I could just go and do it something else. It, it's weird like once you make money, you, you lose a little bit of that hunger and you have to find different ways to motivate you. Like the obvious that money's not the money I have right now is not going to last forever. It's going to run out. But when you have don't have money, it's like that you're fucking hungry. You're motivated. You want to make money. Yeah. Then you make the money, you make the fame, whatever. And then it's like, damn, that's, you run out of a little motivation. You have to find it other places. Dude, that's why it's so impressive with those champions that have defended their Khabib, belt so many times. Fucking, yeah. Yeah, it really I mean, is. Or Canelo. Even, or even a fighter that's been in it for 10, 15 years, having to find that motivation for a fight camp for that many fucking Like Teixeira. Years. To oh, over, dude. yeah. Wow. I wonder is yeah. that unbelievable? Really Fuck. Is. You know how many senior citizens started MMA that week after he won? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh shit! Yeah. Or you know how many people were like, "Fuck their wife" because they felt re-empowered? <laughs> you know how many people? Like That's how true. many? Like, f I mean, he's 51, I think, or no. something. No, Glover. Isn't he 45, 41, 41, 42. There's they, not a huge difference. Glover yeah, share. exactly, exactly, exactly. 42. Wow. But yeah, that's. I mean, that's to become a world champion. That is older. Like, I plan on being done fighting before then. He just won the belt. It's fucking insane. Yeah. And can he keep... I mean, yeah, it's like... And it seems like he can keep it because his last... Because he had that fight against Lionheart. That was a great fight. Yeah. You know, he had a couple... Uh, he just beat Jan Blahovic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who does it... Yeah, uh, it was crazy. He's got that... Is Yuri, that heavyweight? Yuri guy next. Light heavy. Oh, yeah, light heavy. Oh, Yuri. That motherfucker's like 3-0 in the UFC or something. Crazy. Yeah, I know. He's a... That's like young versus old. How old is he actually? I don't even know. I think he might be 30 something. Do you think at a certain point, if there's a 21 year old dude going out there fighting a 42 year old, that it's like almost feels like this feels wrong? Beating up a daddy, yeah. Uh... Unless that daddy whoops the son. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think if he's champ and there's a 21 year old, it's like, all right, that's just, I mean, that's what it is. You're the champ. You yeah. Know what I mean, who do you see yourself having to beat for the belt? Like, who do you see that match? So I, you, you, I see. I close my eyes. I see me versus Peter for the UFC belt. I, I see that. I've seen that for a while. I did, that's just what I think happens. Do you think you have any more insight? Because y'all live in like a desert area. Like, because desert creates a lot of space in the brain, and it, it, it's not the same in other places. What do you mean? Um, where you might have a better insight into actually getting good visions and stuff out here. Oh. Um. It's a good question. Nah, I feel like even when I lived in Montana, I always could like visualize pretty well. Is that what you mean? Like visualize yeah. the future and and stuff. If you would have asked me when I was 16 years old, will, will you be in the UFC? Will you have money? Will you have fame? I would have 100% said yes. For whatever reason, I seen that. I believed it with all of my fucking heart. You could ask the people I was surrounded with. You could ask my dad, my parent. Like I believed that. Maybe when I was 16, maybe not I wasn't in the UFC. It was like, will you be popular and have money yeah then once i started fighting it was like oh shit i'm gonna be in the ufc i thought i, I knew or thought i was gonna be ufc champion before i could even name the champions in the divisions wow which was really weird do you going back to what you said about like motivation that kind of thing changing i noticed that too even with like you know you wonder like if uh even with comedy, when the pandemic started, I was like, I wonder if I even wanted to do comedy. It was like, because it finally stopped, you know? Yeah. I've been doing it for four, 15 years. I mean, finally, there was something that made it just, you can't do it. Uh -huh. So I think my brain was like, you just started this 15 years ago. We didn't know it would go where it's gone. Do you even, you know, do you want to do something else? Like your brain starts to like... You yeah. just have a moment of where you can have reflection, you know? Um, yeah. And is your motivation still the same? 
Um, well, I haven't got the belt yet, so like right. that, that I, I have to remind myself. Like I, I need, I, I'm going to be the champion. I have to become the champion. That, that just has to happen. But it, it's interesting with you because it almost seems like it's just about you. It's not about these other whoever else is in the way. It doesn't matter. They're not really fixtures in your world as much. It's, I mean, it really is kind of the sugar show. It's just like this is what I see, and so I have to. Go yeah. Get well, there. it's weird because I. It's like, am I, I feel like I'm the fucking champ. I live like I'm the champ. I'm yeah. like, okay, we got to remind yourself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not actually the champ. I got to remind <laughs> myself that. Like, I feel like I'm the fucking champ. I live like, I feel like I'm living like I'm the champ. I got the house I want, the cars I want, whatever. Like, I'm fucking banging two chicks at the same time. Like, I'm like, I'm the champ. But I'm yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We still got to fucking keep preparing, keep training. You got to get that but I still got to be the champ. I got to wear that belt. Do you find it harder to motivate him? Uh... I don't think so because he's smart enough to know. It's not like I got to call him, hey, you got to fucking train. Hey, you got to train. He's smart enough to know that at how much growth he still has because you still come into jiu-jitsu and you get humbled mm -hmm. or you come into practice and be like, damn, this guy fucked me up. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of growth left. So not too bad. Right now, what is it? Probably 14 weeks till your next fight. <sighs> yeah. So as long as we're staying consistent, at least, f I mean, six, seven practices a week compared to eight or nine or ten. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because you can't train like this far out. You can't train like you can't train like you're in fight camp. You just yeah. can't do it. You can't keep that pace for that long, and you shouldn't. It's not good. Overtraining is a real fucking thing. So right now, I'm like I say, I train nine times in a in a week for fight camp. Right now, I'm training six, seven. You know, you know what I mean. So I'm not overtraining. I was dealing with quadricep tendonitis in my fucking knee since that last fight, just recently, like the last. And three, what's that from? Weed. <laughs> quadricep tendonitis yeah yeah from smoking weed no it's from uh just tendonitis overuse like i said i had three fights last oh. year so just fucking on it so much just recently the last three weeks i've been able to train hard consistently like going to comp training and going back to the mma lab and, and wrestling with those guys and shit so yeah, I guess you really have to pay. Yeah, you, now it's like everything's become a lot more of a science. Like, okay, you know the fight is then. You have the eight weeks or however many weeks you're going to train before it. You know kind of like where you need to be at the beginning, where you need to be at four weeks, six yeah. weeks, and then seven weeks. Eight so, weeks is important. Those eight weeks. Like from right now, what I do for the next eight weeks, I, I definitely got to improve. But what's the most important is those fucking eight weeks in training camp, getting in the best shape possible. Yeah, That's the most important part. And it sucks thinking like I have 14 weeks. It's like, that seems like so long, dude. I wonder how many bantamweight fights are on the Phoenix card. They could stay, say, five weeks you had to prep. Just, just like some numbers. random guy pulls out. Yeah. It's, it, the thing that sucks, too, about moving up in the rankings, it's uh -huh. like, you, for me, I have two more fights in my country. I want to fight. I want to be as close as possible to the title by the time that ends up. Really? Why? Because that's, you know, that's just negotiation reasons, leverage. Like, I, if I'm coming off two more KOs, going in to renegotiate my contract like i'm gonna get a fat fucking contract i lose my next two fights to random people doesn't look good like right but it, but do you have to be cl as close to the title as possible or does it help you to fight like guys that are like just the next one and the next one that's why pedro seems like that 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 next fight that makes the most sense yeah when it comes negotiation time do other like promotions get like an alert how do they find out you're a free agent and then they just start sending offers and then the ufc counters them yeah the thing with the ufc is like they don't want it to go to there they want to sign they want to re-sign you before your contract's up so bellator or one or whatever other company because right now they can't offer me hey, hey we'll pay you this much because i'm under contract with the ufc i can't not talk to anyone else it's illegal so say I fight out my two fights and now i'm a free agent whether they hear that from me or they pay attention or whatever um and i i uh, yeah i don't know um yeah because what could they really probably are yeah like what i'm wondering what, but yeah even if to stay competitive as a business they would have to probably make some offer yeah yeah and i want i want to stay in the ufc i want to be in the ufc that's where i belong that's i want to be the ufc champ i want to defend the title i want to move up i want to be in the ufc so like obviously it's just it's leverage it's like that they offer me this much like will you match the will the ufc match that hopefully you know ideally i have a good relationship with them they know what i'm worth so if they see like yeah that makes sense like it's just it's just leverage yeah but yeah i mean ufc's fucking been nothing but good to me i fucking love the ufc dana white's the best fucking president 
in all of sports. Oh, he's crazy. Dude, I, I got to go to, I got, I went over to UFC and got to go in there and be in the UFC just everywhere, you know? And, and at the fight, like in the green room or what? No, at the, um, yeah. yes, I got to do that, but I also got to just go to the Apex, go to like their offices and stuff and meet with them. We we're talking about maybe trying to do something together, you know? Um, and so, uh, we went and talked with them, and then we got to, and Dana came in the room. It was really, really cool. Dana fires you up. Oh, oh he, yeah. He's just a fucking character. It's, oh, I wanted to fight the other two guys in the room, and they <laughs> fucking worked at UFC, dude. I was like, I'll fucking fight either one of these little fucking chair monsters right now, son. Uh, yeah, he does. The whole place fires you up, man. We got to go over and just just see all the, just where everybody kind of practices, where they shoot all the, you know, cool promos and stuff. PI is fucking sick, dude. I love going there. We're actually going to Vegas Friday because the first competition, but we're going to try to pop by the PI. It's always just a fun place. They got the hot cold. They got the lunch. When did they do? They built that, what, four or five years ago now? It's crazy how much it, I wonder what deal that they got that they just fucking grew so much. Because seven years ago, eight years ago, cornering guys and being with guys in the UFC, it's like, you didn't have that. You go to a hotel, you get one room with two beds for your whole team. Nuh-uh. There's no PI. Yeah. There's no nutritionist to help you with your nutrition. It's just. Well, they sold for $4 billion, remember? So that's probably win, huh? Oh, who won in WME, I think? Yeah. So, uh, do you know you, April 16th, Vincent Luque versus Bilal Muhammad, main event. I didn't know that. Did you? I was looking. Up, I was trying to look at the Phoenix card to see if there's bandwidth on it. That's a sick fight, Vincent Luque versus Bilal Muhammad. That's those, like a title eliminator. Those are Vanum, Vanum weights? Uh, welterweights. Oh. That's a uh, Kamaru. Oh class. wow! But I didn't know that fight was even happening. What do y'all see with this Gaethje uh, Oliveira? Whoo! That's here. You going? Uh, I have two shows. Oh, I'm so angry, bro. I have two oh, shows. At where night. at? In, in LA. In LA. Yeah, that's gonna be a banger i'll wear a little earpiece and commentate the fight for you while you're on stage yeah dude i uh uh even at the at the Oliveira uh poirier fight gaethje was back there you could tell he's just ready to fight like as if at that moment one of them couldn't make it in he would be like i will go in right now oh 100 percent that guy i don't know if there's anybody who's like i will go in right now more than him yeah Dude, that Phoenix card is fucking sick. Oh! There's Donald Cerrone, uh, Joe Lozon. That's an interesting fight. Uh, I'm so Michael angry Chandler, Tony Ferguson. <gasps> That's on the same fight. Rose versus Carla. Charles. That's Dustin. May seventh. <sighs> May seventh. Yeah. What do you think happens with that one, Timmy? What do you think? Which Which one? Justin? With the uh, Gaethje Oliveira. God, fucking Oliveira has that Muay Thai stance where he doesn't really move his head and like a good hard-hitting boxer like justin and charles you see him get always get dropped but then he wins but then he gets dropped and people don't want to go into his guard yeah so they drop him and he can lay there from his back a little bit and get his wits about him and then stand back up it's fucking insane i feel like justin could beat charles but i feel like justin would have a tough time beating islam but i feel like charles could potentially give islam fucking trouble oh dude that division's sick too it's just mma math is crazy yeah well islam just riding up that i mean he is literally like i'm sure they're all like how are we gonna be this guy same with cum shot yeah yeah he's gonna be fucking he's a him versus gilbert's coming up hajma yeah and i don't oh yeah and i don't see how that how i don't know i don't see how anybody beats these these russian guys or the dagestanians yeah they're damn you know, they don't even have, they got semen eyelids, man. These people are fucking wild, bro. Semen eyelids. It's a sick tat. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think Gilbert, if someone's going to beat Hosma, Gilbert's got, you know, the best chance besides Kamaru. Yeah. Colby versus hum, uh, Kamsa, it's interesting. But like, he's not, Kamsa hasn't beat anybody near Gilbert's level. So if he goes out there and beats Gilbert, it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. How good is Gilbert with wrestling? He Good. can wrestle like a motherfucker. He can? And like Kamzat High t- level. Kamzat took the jingling guy and fucking tossed him around, but so did Neil Magny. Neil Magny's not a big, powerful guy, and he fucking smacked around jingling too. Yeah. But dude, it's He's gonna not- it's gonna tell a lot about Kamzat this fight. Wow. He's yeah, I mean oh, that's on the seventh too? No, no, no. I don't know when that oh. one is. That one's is that one sooner? That one's April 9th. Oh, that one's the next weekend. That one's the Peter Aljo. Next weekend. Oh, that's gonna be wild. That's a good one. Who's a main event of that oh that's alexander Bolkonowski versus korean zombie damn mckenzie dern Tor- tj torres kelvin gaslam oh that fight got canceled is there a female fighter that you think could beat you out there or has there been in the history female in any weight class probably not 
No. no. <laughs> you 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 feel you if you go with a girl like a black belt world champion girl, you feel the just the difference. So no. Right. <clears throat> You always wonder what that's like. But Cyborg, I mean, she could give a lot of guy fucking problems, I think. Yeah. She's because pretty... she's tall. Was she 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and she she punches like a guy. Yeah. yeah. So. But Man and Union just fucking knocked her out. Man and yeah. Union's a beast, too. Yeah. But, yeah, probably not. Um, We'll finish up, man. I was just thinking about this. If you had a fuck, Mary kill, Anik, DC, mm. and Bisping, man, how do you roll that out with those beautiful men? Um, And it's going to be sad to see one of them go. Yeah, there DC, go. We, we have a... We have a love hate relationship. I'll kill him. All right. I, I couldn't actually because he could, you know, beat me up. Unfortunately. Oh yeah, he's that freaking hearty so, pudding pot I'll dude. I'll kill him. He... Um, Bisbing and Anik. Anik and I are boys. I, I really like Bisbing too. Unfortunately, I wouldn't. I just really wouldn't like to fuck either of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not cute enough. Yeah, but think about it a little more. Yeah. Yeah, I would fuck them. I mean, so I'm just saying, <laughs> think about like, you know, at least go to dinner. Don't make it all about just the sex. Like, say if you had to do an evening oh. with one of them, who would it be? I feel like I'd get along with all three of them, really. Me and DC would have a little back and forth. I'd probably have to fucking hit him in a little single leg, maybe switch to a double leg if he's talking shit. But if you're talking marriage, I mean, Anik would probably be the one. Yeah. Anik would be that little thought kind of, or he'd be like that kind of like, like a little slut. pretty boy you take oh, out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a little sassy boy. Yeah, and Bisping would be that... um. <clears throat> You have to clean his eye and shit if it fell out for him. Yeah, but that would almost be romantic. Like, oh, oh honey. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Shine it. Yeah. But he was the champ, too. He's got a belt. You got to remember him. Oh, the you count, know? bro. He'll look good in that jewel. He'll be, he'll be wearing his own jewel. Have you ever uh, li listened to or read his book? Uh-uh. Very good. Very good book. Really, really enjoyed that book. Talked about, you know, him growing up and, you know, winning the title and shit. It's a really good book. Yeah, he's fascinating, man. He used to be a DJ, too, man. He came on the podcast once when we were talking about when he was a DJ at, like, a nightclub and shit. God, dude, I feel like that's something I could do, too. Be a little DJ. Just get the crowd fucking hype, dude. Just fucking flopping my wiener out there. It's like... Well, I don't think you can get your dick out, but... No, my, I at think, my club. Oh, yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. Club. There's a little sock over his own. Yeah, yeah. a little sock. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, what if you had your pubic hair the exact same way as you had your own hair? That'd be cool. And, I do. Oh, I color it too. Just some bangs. Nobody <laughs> knew? <Some> bangs. <laughs> that would be cool though. A little curly fucking. You're like, damn, that dick looks like it has a sick crossover. <laughs> damn. Cornrow it for my fights. Um, so finish it off for me then. So you got DC will pass away. So then you're down to, you're down to Bisping. Yeah. Who, who do you marry? Uh, I, I mean, the fact long term. That long you term. really have to think about, you have to I don't know. Should we say fuck or should we say uh, something else? I would say that's just like kiss. really hurting my kiss. head. Stand there on the porch when somebody leaves. You have to do that. Okay. You have to stand there together. Wave by. I don't know. I'd probably do that. I'd probably marry Anik. I feel like we could just commentate fights all night together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anik yeah. would stay. You wouldn't be able to get any rest, though. He would just be up commentating all Dude, night. Dude, he does some serious research and like some serious yeah. homework for that shit. Oh, he's amazing. Like he's Bisping good. hangs, sleeps upside down, I heard. So. Oh, yeah, he does Bisping likes shit. his alcohol, too, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. So he might abuse you. He might beat my ass. Yeah. So I think you got to go with that because that would be good for sparring. So I think you marry Bisping. Okay. I think you bang Anik. Ah! Sorry, Anik. You know, it is what it is. And you could bang him again. You if know, you choose. Yeah. And then DC would have a beautiful funeral too, because he's from Louisiana. It would be a very like the musical presence there. It would be eating good. Yeah. Let me ask you this: yeah. Fuck Mary, kill Kim mm -hmm. Kardashian, uh, Brittany Palmer. Okay. And give me another one. The artist. Uh, 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 Megan Fox. But don't say, don't be mean because she's dating uh, Machine Gun Kelly. So. Okay. And just be thought, um, thoughtful. Yeah, Megan Fox, I think, would be out. I'm just, it's, she's not my vibe. So you'd kill her. Beautiful lady. So I would have someone else kill her, but she would not Sorry, be Megan. around. Okay. Um, and I would probably do a poison. So it's not like yeah, okay. something violent that she like can still look nice. Putin stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I would go that. And then Kim uh, and Brittany Palmer, it's like, wow, which one do you want to smash? Bisks. Uh, I'd probably want to. Well, with Kim, your marriage isn't gonna last, so it depends. You don't know that. You do. Statistically speaking, you might think that, <laughs> but you don't know that. Dude, she's over. Is she over two or over three with marriages? <laughs> yeah. So, like so I mean, I mean, it's, 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 I think I would probably. 
but then you're gonna be living that Kardashian life, so you have to be on the show. You're gonna have to. I would love to be on the wow. show. But say someone like you didn't sign a prenup, do you get half her cheddar? Yeah, if you slide in the right way. I don't think I could make love good enough to not to beat a prenup. Yeah, no. like you gotta fuck good to beat a prenup. Yeah. Cardi B style fucking wop. wop. Yeah, yeah wop. you gotta really. But imagine fucking Kim and telling your friends. She'd That'd probably, be sick. I don't know if she'd feel it. What I, do you, you mean? know, she got a tight puss. They got that reparations vagina, baby. Yeah. That thing is definitely giving back. Yeah, yeah. Stop, dude. Um, it's I, back. I think I'd probably marry. I'd probably marry Brittany Palmer. Then maybe I don't know. I've never met her in person. What is she like? I met her. I met her one time after my after that last fight at the club, and I was faded. But I thought we were vibing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought we were vibing. I shot her a DM one time when I was in Vegas at one of the fights. And oh, I probably I didn't that. get it back. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get the DM back. I was fucking low-key kind of sad. Yeah. I'll, then I would probably, yeah, maybe. I think she does art too. So maybe that would be nice to hang some art yeah. up. I don't well, know. Kim, Kim's a lawyer. So is you got, she? Do you not see Pete's tat? Yeah, but I don't, know if that's a a, I don't know if that's a legit. No, I think she's like legit went to school and shit. Oh, damn. So it's kind of hot. Really? No, that's, that's like, really hot. Stressful. It's like fuck. What? What's the big case you're working on? Boo? When did she go to school and grind? When she's born that rich? I, I think. Yeah. I, I want to say think, she actually is pretty smart and shit. She might have hired like some word slave or something, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or some book because you can do that. You can like go study and then you can. I think if you're rich, you can go, you can get whatever. Well, you didn't want. she go to the White House and like actually help a lot of innocent people yeah, out? I think so. I think she it's met up with cool. Trump and, and helped some people get out of jail. If you had, the, say you had one time to smash yeah. Kim Kardashian's biscuits. Okay. And you were guaranteed I could get her pregnant. Okay. Would you? I would. I probably would. I'd just be like, why would I do that stressful added to my life? But I, I don't know if I could help myself. Would yeah, it, the stress would be, would be intense. Why? Because then, you're, I mean, that's just, yeah. like you said, you're on the show. You're dealing with Kanye. You're dealing with Pete. The now. kid's life is all is going to be all over the place. Yeah. True, I true. would do it, though, just because I have no self-fucking-discipline. I would do it. I think you'd have to do it to see what it would all be like, How you know, if the kid would even, yeah. But I think, here's my question is, you're going to bang Kim Kardashian, right? She's coming up to the hotel room. Where are you in the hotel room before she walks in? Are you sitting in the chair naked? Are you and you have to be naked, right? Oh, are you? Walk, I would be. Do you you pretend you're just doing something in the bathroom and then she come and you walk out? Like, or do you lay in the bed? Like, what would you do? Could I be drunk? That's a great question. Um, no, you, oh, have, shit. you have to. That be changes sober. it. I feel like sober. I still am pretty can get goofy. Drunk, I'm the funniest motherfucker alive. After you, no. for me, I'd have my robe open and act surprised when she walked in. God, would you be hard? Good half nice that's good that's good i would probably be playing some fucking acdc oh yeah Back just by, jamming yeah. no i'd be uh, i'd be playing some um on your phone playing music on your phone i'd be, <laughs> be such a poor I'd, move <laughs> i'd play it on my phone i'd play kanye loves kanye that song i'd put it in a bowl so it's a little bit louder yes i would uh i would have the, the curtain in that open. ice thing put it in that ice bowl oh that's a good idea yeah. that's some good tunes i'd have the curtains open overlooking the city, probably in Vegas, because it would be after a fight. Yeah. Um, and you'll be beaten a little bit after I'd the be fight. sore. Yeah. My fucking hands would be sore from just KOing like three people in a row. Would your dick be wrapped in tape or not? No, no, dick's ready to rock. Okay. No what condom. about you? Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I think. Hold on. I haven't thought about this. Well, let me tell you. I don't know. I think I'd... Uh... She's coming. She said, I just, I'm coming up the elevator now. Ooh. Ring. I think you almost want to be looking out the window so they see your ass when they come in. I think that's kind of just a funny move. Because if they see your dick right when you walk in, I think you look so helpless kind of just in a vulnerable. weird way. Yes. I got a, like a fat little butt. Yeah, so. not, not my saggy butt. I, I got to be fat. I always get, Danny always. So you could separate butt. your legs a little bit and be kind of looking out the window, maybe pointing at something. A leg up, yeah, a leg up. And I'd be like, I would turn and be like, oh, a lot of flights tonight, you know, or something like that. Something that sounds like. <laughs> Like aeronautic that or something. That would get her wet. That would get her. Uh, that would get her real wet. So, but see, then you almost want to go Kim with the bank because you're gonna have that one magical. I just don't know the turmoil after that. What it's like. I'd be wearing two watches too. Yeah. Like a Cartier and like a, an AP. Oh, I'd have a house arrest bracelet on my dick. Dude. Damn. That's what they're used to. Damn, that'd be sweet. That's true. That's, That's true. totally what they're used to. Yeah, no, I think it me and Kim Matt we'd get along. Oh, I think that they that they would really like it. I I remember that she was really nice whenever I met her. We have some mutual friends. Um, but I I also like Pete. We got to respect Pete. Yeah. Come on now, let's be respectful. But yeah, I think 
Yeah, I mean, if they're still seeing each other, you say you don't even know. Yeah, if not, I mean, then we're good. Yeah. So. So. Um, guys, I think we really covered a lot. Oh, man. I was just about to start talking about Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, you were? Well, that's it. Now, here's one thing you run into, though. If you, if you In a good way. are married to Kim, you probably would never. Meet her dad. Uh, oh, <laughs> shit, wait. You can't meet I take dad, that I back. Think, right? the, her dad passed away. Oh, her dad. I, Paul, that, that's Jesus. fucked up. No, Kim's no, no, dad's I, alive. No, Kim's, Kim's dad did pass away. Right. I Paul, That was fucked up. I meant um, Kylie and Kendall's dad is Caitlyn. Yeah. Okay, okay so I've Mom. cut that. I, Mom. I fucked up. Uh, the, um... Because her, her, da- her dad was the was the lawyer in the O.J. Simpson yeah. case. But you the, could, right. Which is, yeah. You couldn't make love to the other one. Like, either way, you're not going to have a chance to date one of the other daughters, though. Damn. Yeah. I think I could persuade. I think I, I could, if I read some E-40 lyrics, I think I could, like, really, like. Possibly. I think it. I could do it. But would you think if you were about to bang Kim, you could say, all right, Kendall, it's almost like a, um what's behind like i am willing to wager this chance to uh make love to kim to have a chance to bang you you think she would accept would it would that be kind of like romantic like wow this guy's giving up this to have a chance to take me out especially the way they're competitive yeah i think i I don't know fuck i mean who's the cutest kylie no kendall Yes, Kendall's cute. Kendall is the dumb, like, oh, like you know. I like Kylie. Kim got that desert fat on her, bro. They got that desert. That like desert. So what gristle, episode did that you? Or what season did you really start liking Kendall? <laughs> At an adult time, <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's weird. Like 2006, they're like 11 years old. So what season? To when they're 18, seven yeah. years after that, it's fucking weird. Dude, you know no what? Ah, uh, I saw. I went and saw that guy Oliver Tree the other night. Have y'all seen him? I've recently seen him from the from the Impulsive podcast. Yeah, he's in the show's insane. For, really? Like his music, like his concert, the whole thing. Yeah, it's absolutely. He looks like a character. It's like John Benet Ramsey kind of like I. He could be John Rene Ramsey. First of all, it's like John Benet Ramsey's on L is on doing DMT or something at a farm. Damn. Yeah, I would like to. I mean, he looks like a character. Seems like goofball. You know he, he is, bro. It, the show is fire. Bro. I wonder if he gets pumped. I mean, is that hair real? He's got a lot going on. I don't know. You know what I mean? I think that would determine a lot. He's got a lot going on, dude. I think, I don't know if he can get erections, though. Somebody said he can't get erections. I'd probably kill myself. I don't know. In Call of Duty. I would go, ch- I, if you can't get erections, I would get the sex change then, right? So you just get fucked. Take some D, yeah. At least. I mean, sorry, it sounds insane now, but <laughs> at least then you can still fuck, you know? Or you get fucked, yeah. No, you you, no, no, bro, you're not getting fucked. You come at it with a hard-ass vagina. You'd be like, I got that hard pussy, son. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So you'd have to like kind of really do some reverse engineering. Like, you'd have to yeah. learn how to twerk like a fucking yeah. madman. Tim, Tim loves twerking on his girl's face. Oh, oh damn, don't. really? <laughs> oh, I don't. I wonder if chicks are into that, man. Some of them. <laughs> Tim reminds me of the guy that used to come to the arcade and get all the quarters out of the machines, dude. But also, <laughs> low key, be trying to fuck some of the people that are in there. Yeah. Like, like uh, I said, people, not girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is every compliment. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys so much, man, dude. It's great to see you guys. It's just so interesting when I was watching the previous time that we, that we potted. And uh, and you were there too, Tim, and just seeing kind of where you were then, what's going on now. Um, what, how was that over a year ago? I mean, over it was two, two years, years ago. ago. It was June in twenty twenty. I want to say damn. Okay, that was right after I fought Eddie Wineland. I think right after I put him to sleep. Yeah. Right. Okay. Damn, yeah. that was a while ago. So thanks for what are you doing out here? I guess we. Yeah. It's been a neat trajectory. We just had a meeting. Oh, so right. uh, fuck yeah. Yeah, just honored to be able to pop in, dude. See the sugar show. Um, and Timbo, man, thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you guys in the future, baby. Thanks, brother. All right, guys. Peace. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones, but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wind shine that light on. the hey.
Sit down there, go. 